In today's show, we're going to talk about PowerShell profiles, colors, fonts, some settings you can do just to make your life a little easier, really just based on some of the comments I've had on some of the previous videos. So it should be a pretty quick topic. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. Have you ever wanted to make PowerShell act a little nicer for you, right? So every, maybe every time you log in, there's uh, some settings you make. Maybe you change the same directory or the font colors aren't right or things like that. Well, today we're going to look at PowerShell profiles, a little introductory, and talk about how you can make some of those settings so that it behaves a little better for you. Should be a pretty basic topic as far as uh, just kind of quick, dirty, here's the things you need to know to get started with profiles. And then, you know, obviously there's a million other things you can learn along the way, but I'll do the whole get you started and I'll let you figure it out from there. So, cool? Cool. All right, well, let's just jump right over to my desktop and see what's going on. Okay, so we'll open up this guy. And so the number one complaint I've gotten on my videos, can you believe people complain about my videos? I can't either. But the number one complaint I get is that on some devices, especially mobile devices, some of the text is hard to read. And the reason because that is, is right if I do write host, this is hard to read. What happens is that text is just a color that's way too close to the blue background. But those are the default colors, right? I didn't do it on purpose. I actually left them on the default colors this way because this is what Windows 10 PowerShell has. Or if you are on an older version of PowerShell, if you install PS Readline, which there's a video for that down in the description, um, it will put, the, put these colors out there for you. So, right, you do that, and we get those ugly colors hard to read. I was like, well, man, that is hard to read. I kind of agree with people. So how can I help them um, make that better? So if you type in get PS read line option and hit enter, you're going to see lots of different information about the different settings here for the colors. And you can see that in this case, the string foreground color, remember foreground color is the text color and background color is if there's any highlighting behind it. Um, so string foreground color is dark cyan. Well, it turns out that dark cyan on top of dark magenta just doesn't work very well. So what we want to do now that we found that value though is we want to change it. And what you'll see here is that I can only change it to one of the approved PowerShell colors, right? You can't use all the colors of the rainbow. You can't type in teal or, uh, you know, periwinkle blue or something cool like that. Uh, so what I need to do is figure out what are the different color options available. So let's clear our screen. And to find the different colors, I went out on the internet, did a little searching around, I found a quick little script for that. So here's a function, it's called function show colors. I would give credit to the person I stole it from, but I literally have no idea who it is. And it would have been restolen several times, so who knows who originally wrote it. Either way, you run that function and we just type in show colors like this. And so that's going to show you that there's 15 or 16 different colors, right? Because we started at zero, got to count 15 plus one, 16. Uh, 16 different colors available to us. And you can see what each one looks like in its name. And clearly, since dark magenta is uh, not here, you know that's the color of the actual uh, screen. So, you know, dark magenta on dark magenta turns out not to be a color. So that's a very helpful little script. Um, I'll put that down in the description below so you can cut and paste that uh, later. But with that said, it looks like, you know what? I think your lives would be a lot easier, things would be a lot easier to read if we, let's just use regular magenta. I don't know. Sounds fun to me. To use regular magenta, we're just going to paste in this little line right here. And so you can see what we're going to do is we're going to do instead of get PS read line option, we're going to do a set PS read line option. And then token kind, so what uh, what object we're we trying to do, it's a string. And then foreground color is magenta. Remember, foreground color is the color of the text. Background color is if there's any type of highlighting or shading behind it. So we'll hit enter. And so then now if we say write host, is this pretty? It is. Look at that. So now it's in a nice magenta. Hopefully the next comment on this video is, is magenta was a terrible choice as well. I, I went with magenta just to kind of get a contrast. Um, so you feel free to use whatever color you want, but that works out pretty well. So pretty nice, right? So that gives us the capability to fix one of your major complaints about my videos. But there's a downside of all of that. And what is the downside of the, what we just did there? If we close this PowerShell window, and we launch PowerShell again, right? So start our friend PowerShell. And we say, right, host, what about now? 
Oh man, it's back to that ugly color that you don't uh, like or, or want to see, right? It's that, uh, what did we say it was? Dark magenta on magenta? I don't even know. Some old, ugly color combo. So that's because PS read line settings are just for the particular PowerShell window that you have open. So there's no global attribute for that. But PowerShell does have this concept of a thing called profile. And so what you can do is you can set your profile and do things like pre-configure what color you want your uh, comments to be. So to do that, let's clear our screen again. What you can do, type in dollar sign profile. And so that will tell you the current profile that is being used uh, by your PowerShell session. Now what's interesting though is if you do test path and then dollar sign profile, and uh, dollar sign profile is a built-in PowerShell variable, right? I didn't set anything to do that. Every one of your windows has it, it's built in. But test path is a function to see if that file exists or not. So if the file exists, it'll be true. If it doesn't, it's false. And you can see here that it is false. And we can also confirm that by, if we look over here, I've got a window open already to see user Shane documents Windows PowerShell, which is where it said this file would be. So it's like, hey, I'm using a profile, but there's not a profile there, so I'm not actually using a profile. Well, that's good to know. So let's create a profile, right? That seems like a fun thing for us to do. So we're going to do new item, and then we will do uh, dash path is profile, right? Because that's just a string with that, uh, that line in it. And then we'll say item type is file, like that. And if we look over here, oh, we got a file. Good job. But we're going to do the PowerShell way, so we'll say notepad, dollar sign profile. And so now it opens up our friend notepad and opens that file for us. So this is just a little PS1 file that gets loaded every time that PowerShell gets loaded for me. And in this case, I'm pretty much free to put in here anything that I want. So for example, if we paste in set PS read line token kind string foreground color magenta and close this, whoop, say save, let's get out of PowerShell, exit, and let's open PowerShell again. And we'll just type in uh, quotes. Oh, look at that. Pretty. There you go. Our magenta came back, right? It's automatically going to be pulled out of that profile file every single time it runs. And that's whether in the Windows PowerShell here, the normal one, or if I right click here and say run as administrator, I'll click on yes because you can't see it. And so there you can see that uh, either session, it is also still pretty, right? Pretty awesome. Okay, so that's a PowerShell profile, and that's the thing I wanted to kind of talk to you about today. Right? Just got a, took a really long way to get there, I guess. Uh, so let's open it up again. So we'll just hit up a couple times, Notepad profile. So there's our one setting. So this is a great place for you guys to put things that you want to have happen every single time you start PowerShell. My favorite thing to put in here, start-transcript, right? We've talked about this before. Every single time that you open PowerShell, I think you should start a transcript up so that way you've got a running log of everything you did in this session and it's kind of like a, you know, cover your butt type of thing, right? You can show people, no, I didn't delete all the files on the server. Here's everything I did in PowerShell. There's no delete or remove item here. So, haha, -ha, wasn't me. I worked in corporate America too long. I know that's the type of mentality you gotta have. So that's a pretty neat uh, thing you can do here. Um, another option, that I like to do is to put it into a specific folder. So, for example, I do most of my PowerShell demos out of the demo folder. So if I put this line in there, when we open up PowerShell, it'll automatically be there. And then just to show off, kind of a little nerdy, I'm gonna grab this line right here, and we'll paste this in. And so dollar sign host.ui.rawui.window title title is I love PowerShell. I want to put Shane was the best, but I thought that was a bit much. So I went with I love PowerShell. So we put all these little things in here, right? Anything that is a valid um, PowerShell commandlet will go in here just fine. So let's close this out and say save. Let's close our window and start and open PowerShell again. And you can see start our uh, transcript started. We're in the demo folder. And if we do um, our quotes, there's our pretty color. Pretty in pink, right? So pretty easy stuff. Woohoo! That's pretty darn cool. Now the one downside of this whole I love PowerShell thing up here at the top though is what happens if I launch as administrator? Run as administrator. Yes. 
Well, that also said I love PowerShell. But normally when you run PowerShell window as administrator, what happens? It says administrator colon, I love PowerShell or something of that nature. Well, we just overrode all of that. So that was not exactly what I wanted to have happen. So we got to get a little more creative. And to get a little more creative, what you can do is clear our screen off here. And let's get rid of this other window just so it doesn't make it hard to read. Pull us up here. Okay. Is if we run that line right there, and I'm not even going to try and read it because it's a bunch of garbly gook, but essentially that is a line of PowerShell that will return true if the current PowerShell session is an administrator, or it will return false if you are not in, uh, running it as administrator. So that's a handy little piece of code to have in your toolbox. But now that we have that piece of code, well, we're pretty smart guys, right? Let's open up this, and girls, don't, uh, I don't want to offend anyone there. But so instead of this line, let's wrap it in an if statement. Let's say, hey, if they're an administrator, do this. And then if they're not an administrator, then do that. And because you guys do not want to watch me type all that, I'm going to cut and paste it out of this file, and then we'll talk about what it is. So I'll copy. Let's delete this, this out. Delete that out and paste in here. Okay. So if all that crazy security principle stuff, right, and I'll put it down the bottom so you can grab it. Um, what do you want to do? So if security principle is true, then host UI write the window title, I love PowerShell dash running as administrator. Else, so if it's false, just write I love PowerShell. Pretty simple. So let's save that. Boop. I probably need to make a video on if style. We'll exit out of here. And so if we open up just PowerShell directly, you can see I just love PowerShell. And if we do start, right click on it, say run as administrator, say yes. Now you can see I love PowerShell running as administrator. Success. Now the last thing that I would probably do is up here on start transcript, right? You notice every time that it, it tells me where the file is and all that, I know where the file is. I, I get it, there'll be an order by date, blah, blah, blah. So what I can do is I'll, I'll update this and I'll say to out-null. Uh, and so what that little change will do for you is that makes it so that you can a, um, put all the text out to the window, or not to the window, but to null. So that way the text, like you know where the transcript started at, just gets routed out to the middle of nowhere, lost in the ether, it's gone forever. It's like the little token that fell out of the network, you know? So, so there you go. So there is a pretty handy dandy little power, uh, profile script. And so that particular one that we just wrote there, that one is going to apply to every time that you personally on this machine run PowerShell, uh, right, the actual PowerShell console. So it's not gonna apply if you run PowerShell in a script editor or any other type of other tool. And so that brings me to one of my uh, last points is that this profile stuff can get pretty, I don't want to say complicated, but a little crazy. Let's, you know, let's close this window. Let's clear this screen. So what you can do if you type dollar sign profile and then pipe it over to select star, that's going to show you all the different pro, uh, profile files that could be loaded. And so what you're going to find out is that there is one for the current user and current host. And that's the one we've been playing with, right? It's this bottom one. There is a current user all host, so that's the profile PS1. And then there's the all users for the current host and all users for the all host. Uh, the current uh, host stuff, there's also a separate one for the ISEs. Uh, but so really, if like you're on the machine, like one of your servers, and you want to make sure that everyone had the same PowerShell prompt or the same thing, like starting transcript every time they open PowerShell, no matter where they did it, then you could go ahead and set that top one. You'd customize that one to uh, invoke all the things you want to do. Um, there is ample of articles written about this stuff out there on the internet, so I don't want to rehash any of that. I've kind of given you all the pieces, so you now see what it takes to customize one of these, and you could change the appropriate one as you did. I don't want to go and repeat all these steps, and you're like, oh, well, what was the point of that? Um, the other thing that I will remind you, and actually I will give credit to my buddy uh, Dave Ackroyd, who's on Twitter, at LearnPowerShell, so at symbol LearnPowerShell. Good guy, uh, very smart in the PowerShell space. But he uh, wanted me to also remind you guys that if you do that command right there, get help about profile, right? That'll give you the built-in um, uh, learnings about PowerShell. So, or the PowerShell profiles, I should say. A lot of fun stuff there to be learned. Um, hopefully this helps. I will start using this in my videos going forward. So hopefully I don't get more complaints about the blue on blue uh, stuff taking place also. 
And I think that does it for today. So as always, if you like it, click the like button. If um, you're into this type of stuff, you know, hit subscribe. Um, or subscribe's right here, I think. Anyway, uh, always helps to keep me motivated, keeps me making a lot of these videos. And there's a whole series on PowerShell. There's a whole series on SharePoint, SharePoint Online, and some Azure stuff out on my channel. So check it out. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Shane's Cows. If you leave a comment below, I usually respond within a day to those also, and that's where I get feedback on uh, new video ideas or just any of this fun stuff. And of course, if you want to work together, good old Bold Diras, we have some PowerShell training classes available, we have SharePoint training classes available, and we have me available. So if you just want to hang out and consult, I can do that too. So, cool. Well, thanks. Have a great day. Me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Somebody stop the recording.